Brat time, baby. We may not have succeeded on Alan, but at least we can succeed at cooking some brats. This guy's a brat wizard. <laughs> Your butt is lighting up. Look at that. What's going on with his butt? It's like a lightning bug. What is that? Why do you have this on strobe? I'm just letting the people know we're cooking brats. Cooking brats tonight, yeah. Yeah, look at that spike here. You think it's actually, is it actually? Oh, it's, oh, it'll light up like mm -hmm. it smell? It's on my hands. Never Stop to me is more of a reminder. Go and do something new. Never stop exploring, never stop fishing, never stop going to the unknown. We don't have any idea what we're getting ourselves into. Two high school buddies grab some rods, hook the boat, hop in a car, and travel to places neither of us have ever been to. I just got a feeling it's gonna get worse. Not this again, are you kidding me? He's on, that's another big one. Get in there! That's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna shock you, I'm gonna shock you. <laughs> I suppose next time we'll see you guys, we'll be in a different state on the ocean. He's coming back up the lake, watch out, watch out, he's coming back up the lake! Oh my god! Oh my god! Welcome to the Never Stop Tour 2. Yeah, look at that spike here. You think it's actually, is it actually? Oh, it's, oh, it'll light up like <laughs> Did you get that on footage? Perrick says, I doubt this works, mother- That- Works. <laughs> Damn, that is flammable. Yeah, my face almost got burned. Did you get that on footage? That was ridiculous. That was honestly way more than I had thought. I doubted him. I doubted him on the spike yet. He used he show literally them, show them what we literally used to light our fire because we're not survivalists. We literally used garlic spike it. <laughs> Which is what you use to add flavor to your fish baits. And that absolutely lit the lit the fire on. So if you're ever in a survival situation. Use this stuff to start a fire. Whoosh. We Water. should make some of that stuff. That stuff's amazing. Ah, oh, now it's all over me. Sick. Yeah, don't touch the fire. Sing. Saucy zingers. That bread is so interesting. Mm, it's sweet. Perry got cheesy brats with sweet bread. And it is kind of a an uncommon delicious duo. I like to call this a celebratory bratwurst feast, but I don't think we fully deserve it yet. But that's why we're gonna stay here tonight, fish here tomorrow, and figure out and really see what Alan Henry has to offer. We got a little bit of intel, we met some viewers on the lake and they gave us some some ideas as to what we should do tomorrow. But for now, get some R and R. Eat some food, chill, do our homework quick in the morning crack on. If this lake is not what we thought it was, then we'll move on to our journey. Thank gotta you. catch fish. We gotta catch fish tomorrow, dude. Yesterday we got a decent dose of Alan Henry. Didn't really do that good. Uh, I think we caught two fish, had a, a few bites. We saw one really nice bass. We, we, we now realize that this place has big fish. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on that big bait game. I'm gonna throw on a big swim bait pair because I'm gonna look around for beds. We're gonna try to start off by catching a few fish here and there just to build momentum. But then after that, we're gonna spend a good solid two to three hours just like strictly looking for large fish. So if we can leave this place with at least one bucket mouth, I'm, I'm content. You know, that's the goal is to catch a nice fish at each place, um, experience the lake to its true potential, and then move on to the next fishing zone. So let's get after it. Let's catch some bass. We're on the lake, this is happening. Day number three. And I'm looking at the weather right now, it looks pretty good for this lake. It's a clear water lake, you know. With the clear water, you don't really want to fish, but it's bright and sunny out, so we got clouds rolling in. Looks like right around 4 p.m. we might have some scattered thunderstorms. 
Not too stoked about that. John just said, he said, I'm going to get some content for you guys. Put on a little drop shot. Literally first cast. First cast. Little spots feet on the drag and drop. God, plethora of them in here. I had no idea they were this abundant. Such interesting fish. We might catch a big one today. Who knows? That guy ate a little drag and drop. This is such a good lure for clear water. Hence why I'm using it, because this, this lake is so clear. Doesn't even feel like I'm in Texas right now. A 10 pounder. What was it doing? It came, off, is, of this. It it right came off of this. Right there. Where's he at? Is he going back? I don't think he circled. He came from right there. Oh my god. That thing was so big. That was a carp for a second. Wow. Moving that way, moving that way. Oh, he had the, did you just hit the branch? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That, that is like a, a, a... See him? It's right there. It's right there. See, you must have better glasses than me. Right there. In the right bar... There. No, no, he's out of the bush now. Coming towards us, away yeah, from coming us? coming towards us. What the hell? Oh, there he is. There I he see is. him. Oh, oh my... That is a 10-pounder. See, that <laughs> fish was nothing compared to what that fish is. He's right there. He's sitting right... That, that's his bed, I reckon. Oh, my God. That thing's like 24 inches. Peric had this idea to go up shallow, just look for some, some beds, some lagging fish that haven't fully spawned yet, and uh, take her easy there, chief. And uh, we came way back in this dirty creek, and we found a fish that is like, it, I, don't have, I don't have aquas, I don't have uh, eyeball scales, but it looks like it's over 10 pounds, or at least over eight. I mean, it's so long. Where's he at now? I know, I just kinda wanna watch. It's just to tough see. to tell where his, like, so his bed is at. Well, what it's even doing. It's it's either guarding fry or bedding. I mean, right on top of its area, so. Yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm honestly going to uh, keep moving back in this little creek just to see if I see anything else. And I'm gonna On our way out. My way out, because I could see it a lot better. That From way. this angle, yeah. Yeah. Holy mo, oh my God. It's, it's just like, so finding them is half the battle, then trying to get that fish to eat is just another piece of the puzzle. Like, just because we found it doesn't mean we're gonna catch him. At the very least, that is an enormous fish. Probably the biggest fish I've seen all year. He's back. Dude, she's circling. Oh my god, she's circling. Yes, dude. Oh my god, she's circling. I'm getting the net out. If we can get this fish pissed off, I'm retying. Yeah. Retie a lot. Like yeah. down to. Look at this thing. Still there, dude. Circling. This thing is catchable. <laughs> This is gonna be just stupid if we can get this fish to bite. Brackley said that that fish he caught, the ten he caught, took him an hour and a half. Let's give this an hour and a half. That's what I'm saying. We need to give this thing time. <sighs> Shaking. Eric, that's back here, by the way. She's just sitting there, so this is a good sign. The problem is we've got to make an exact cast in order to get this fish to hopefully eat. My heart stopped, dude. My, my Cinco disappeared, and I was like, oh my god, that's him. That's the fish. But it was the male. 
What the hell? I've never been so disappointed to catch a fish this big before in my entire life. Well. It's probably our biggest bass so far. Yeah, it's here. the biggest bass so far. Meanwhile, we're looking at a 10, which would trump this fish by like tenfold. So weird. I was throwing where that big fish is at. I'm throwing the white lunker log. Thing disappears. I'm like, that's the fish. It's, he's got it. Set the hook and it's just this little guy. I'm assuming it's the male. Other than that, it's just a, it's probably, it could just be like a, a cruising male. I have no idea. We're going to put this fish back though, right? I'm thinking of putting the fish back. She's gone. That is some kind of stuff that'll make your heart just jump out of your chest. Casting out a freaking fish that's over eight pounds and then you see your bait disappear. So weird. I don't know if it was the male or if it's just a random cruiser, but I've never had that happen before. That's really strange. It's got to be the male, I would assume. I haven't seen the, the female since you caught that fish. So maybe that was the male and it spooked her. Sometimes. Dude, like, sometimes I feel like they say, like, you should put that thing in live hole. I feel like most of the time. I did it one time and it didn't work. Every single time. I've done it, like, ten times. It never worked. Never worked. Same for me. And Rackley, he told me he shook off his mail four times when he caught that ten-pounder. Yeah. Which, I mean, that mail will come back. You probably catch that mail in an hour. Right, let's keep moving. I mean, because we can't, I mean, as much as we want to waste a whole day on this fish. So we figured out that after, you know, less than 24 hours of fishing this place, that these bigger fish are in the shallow, dirty water. It's, it's tempting to fish clear water in such a clear water lake, but the thing is, is clear water fish can be pressured, they can be finicky. One way to get some, some big dumb fish to bite is if you go up shallow in the dirtiness. Like, this is light years uh, dingier than what it is on the main lake. Main lake's like 10 feet vis, whereas here it's like a foot. I mean, some, some more, like, yeah, 15, some spots. This lake some. is clear. So we're gonna just try to grind it out in the dirty water areas. We've seen all of our big fish in dirty water. Um, that's what we've come to determine. And as being anglers, like you also gotta like do your strong, you gotta do your strong suit. I like, like fishing dirty water. Not even that, like we're, we're not guys who will sit on a point and drag a no. jig like for 10 minutes. No. Like I gotta be that. flipping, I gotta be looking, I gotta be doing something. So fish your strong point. Sometimes it won't, it, it won't be the best way to catch fish, but you'll have more fun doing it. And, I think I think we can get a big one. One I fish. So. Keep saying that. One fish. Let's go on the back of this creek. We haven't gone back there yet. Which one? This one. Right. We're still like there's still one more little little arm. <laughs> still looking. Don't want to talk about it. Still don't want to talk about it. Still haven't caught one. They still haven't caught that one we keep talking about. We need about. the one, not the a, one. A, like a one, but the one. <laughs> I caught the my one. first bass. Ever? Today? That's, dude, put it there. Congrats, man. Damn, I'm super proud of you. <laughs> Don't do it. What's the depth? No, 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 I got my what? My what? My what? Yeah, yeah. It's your what? What? You lost in your pocket? What's the depth? What's the depth? No, no. <laughs> I'm about to own this kid. No, 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 my what? My what? My what? Damn, my you got heavier. My what? <laughs> Am I going on us? <laughs> my what? <laughs> it might. <laughs> <laughs> Should have taken it out faster. No. <laughs> we can wet. Get go up there. Go up there. <laughs> it's so cold. It's so cold. Yeah, what's the water temp, Alex? Real quick, what's the water temp? I don't know if that was fair because as you see in the last clip there. I went pee pee all over myself because you pushed me. But I, I thought you were going to go in and I was going to grab you. Wait, what? You were going to what? Nuh uh. <laughs> Nuh uh. Not happening. You can't pick me up. I can pick you up. You're not going to be able to pick me up. <laughs> I mean. You, you'll get me later. How about that?
can't give up the ghost. There's, uh, I just, I, I come to the conclusion that it's just tough to catch fish out here. We've got, we've got no idea how to really locate him, but we're back at the 10 pounder. And, uh, I mean, this thing has just been haunting us since we first fished it. She is still there with the male. Two things that are against us right now. One of which, that fish is bedding in a very peculiar spot, right in some brush. The other thing is the fact that uh, the water's pretty damn dirty. You can just, just barely see the bed. So, I think we're gonna give this like a long time. We're gonna give it a good run. Just because we're, we don't have anything else better to do on this lake. If we can catch this fish, it would be a, a monster victory for this whole boat. I see you. So we pulled up on the on the bed for that big 10 pounder bedding. This is the second lure that I've seen over here, which means this fish has been, it's been fished for. No bed is kept secret. And the reason why there's so much line out from the actual lure where it snapped off is because they didn't want to spook it. So they throw it in there, cut it off, and then uh, made another pitch, retied. Interesting. And they were all, they're both, both these lures were Senkos on uh, stick baits. Or sorry, uh, shaky heads and stick baits. So, this could have been a caught fish already. What? There's some more line. Yeah, pull that up. Struggle bus is uh, is still going hard. Uh, I think next stop is probably going to be completely out of Allen Henry. Pa Peric and I have VIP premium seats on the struggle bus right now. We get to ride front row on the struggle bus. Um, we're not giving up. We said that we weren't going to leave this lake until we got solid bites and showed you guys some freaking Allen Henry fish. Like a four pounder would just make everybody's day. I'm going to try my best to kick her in overdrive. Where are you going? Yeah, where are we going? Well, we're going back to the 10 pounder, which is, we don't, do we have a scale? No, but we can go buy one. I haven't had three in days. We're going back to the 10 pounder. Don't, don't worry, we'll get a scale. If we catch it, we'll get a scale. But we're going back to the 10 pounder for the third consecutive time. This right here is the Trash Master jig. Ow! Paired with a side of pliers in the leg. And uh, paired with the crack and craw. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to hopefully catch this fish on it. Catch it, honey? We left one or two over there for you. <laughs> nice. One big one? I've seen a bunch of big ones. I haven't, uh, I got one to turn. Yeah. But I haven't had a big one eat yet. Have you guys been seeing them bedding as well? Yeah, I mean, they're definitely real shallow. Yeah. I felt some beds. I didn't see any beds. Well, we're back at the legendary 10 pounder owl. If it's still there, but we're gonna see. This is our third attempt. Oh, there she is. Is that here? Oh, that is her. Good swim. Dude, she wasn't even like that. There she is right there. Oh, you I have it? Had it. Had it. What? I had it. Oh, I got this dial now. No way. What? Never stop tour two. Go! <laughs> one biggest bass my life, dude. Hundred percent. That's a ten. Hopefully this guy's got a scale, dude. Holy cow! That's eight nine. Holy cow, dude! <laughs> Look at that large mouth bass. Holy cow, dude! Oh Let's put her in the live hole. We want to make sure she's good. Oh my god, I'm shaking. I'm Dude, shaking I'm right shaking. now. Dude, I can't believe I just caught this thing. Holy cow. This is the fourth attempt at trying to catch this fish. We've been struggling all day long, and we told ourselves we wanted one bass. One bass is all we needed. And look at that.
That's my biggest bass I've ever caught on bad. Do you have a scale by chance? Yeah. Perfect. Could we borrow it real quick? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this is incredible. Third time's the charm, right? <laughs> Wow. I can't, believe I, just caught that thing. I cannot believe you just caught that thing too. It seemed so hopeless and then Barry threw in there and just, he doinked him. What'd you catch it on? Oh, the trash master. Trash master. The buck. Catches the biggest fish of the day. Biggest fish of the whole trip so far. It's gonna be tough to beat that fish. I think it's, I don't know. We'll find out. No guesses, we'll just find out. How about that? Oh no. She's just shy. Just shy. Still a donkey. Yeah, that's Seven, a good one. Six. Thank you. Yes, sir. Dipper in the water real quick. Right. That is a tank, though, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Nice job, dude. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, let's bring that baby back over there. Yeah, there go. let's go back. I am in disbelief right now. 7.6 pounds, Perfect. seven and a half pounder. I think it's my Perfect. third biggest bass I've ever caught. Do this real quick. Take my guess, let's see how long you have. I think a fish is gonna go 20, 23. Tape measure. Put it down. Holy dude. What is it? 24 inches That's long. what we thought it was a 10 pounder, dude. 24 inch fish is a 10 pounder. It's a long 24 fish. inches long. I can't believe. I just caught this fish. Oh my god. Like a mule, eh? Dude. We didn't want to stress that fish out. Boom. Too much. Day game. Like, dude, that was a day changer right there. Day changer. Like I said in the beginning of this video, that's only the second bass I've caught out on this lake. I didn't care. I only wanted to catch one big bass. I wanted to catch a fish over five pounds. And to catch one that was almost eight is absolutely incredible. Behemoth. That fish was a little bit thicker, and like earlier in the season, that'd probably be close to nine or 24 okay. inch fish. I've never caught a fish over 24, 23 inches, or I have, but not that big. Just it's huge, unreal. <laughs> I'm like, everything that happened. Whole, we've seen what, like three boats out here today? Not many. To say yeah. that we had a boat in the cut with us, we probably would have said that fish was eight and a half, so it's good we had a scale. Yeah, that is good. Um, this is it, boys. Trash master. See, the this, reason this fish, this, this bait right here, catches more big fish than anything on earth, but. Paired up with this little jig right there, a little PB and J yeah. with that. The reason why the thing's so sick too is because this this fish had a bed right in trees. Normally when you're bed fishing, it's like, oh, an open piece of sand surrounded by grass. But this is such a, a tough spot. You need something 100% weedless. And the only thing you can generally throw is a Texas rig, but with the Trash Master, it's a 100% weedless jig design. Like pretty much the only solution to get in and out without getting snagged. And the last thing you wanna do is get snagged on top of bed, have to break off. As you guys saw earlier today, there was three lines, three lures stuck in that tree. So people were throwing non weedless baits in there, had to cut off and probably left because they were discouraged and couldn't get that fish. But because Peric was throwing the Trash Master, went in and out with ease. If you guys want to pick up some of those jigs, check down below. It'll be linked there. And um, catch yourself a giant freaking seven pound bedfish or just do some flipping with it. Unbelievable. What a guy. I'm Dude, so that's a, it's your second fish. Second fish out of this lake. I told you, second fish out of this lake. Let that sink in. I didn't catch oh, a I'm fish I'm gonna take a nap. I didn't catch a fish and my heart is pounding. Sometimes you just gotta wait until the right time of day and uh, right positioning and hold. Oh, I can't even talk, dude. Mind bending. <laughs> we did it. Stop, what is it, stop two on lakes wise? Day three? Uh, we fished. Yeah, stop two. Yeah, stop we only two, fished yeah. two lakes so far. Stop two was definitely a success. success. Holy. Um, this might actually be the last lake we fish in Texas. We honestly don't have might any, be. we don't have really any game plans next. We literally don't know what we're doing next. So yeah, we're probably just gonna start driving west, right? Yep, keep going west, that's the plan. Mike Daniels with First Alert 5. Already seeing severe thunderstorms break out across parts of the area. We were looking for hailstones, quarter size, so about an inch in diameter with this thing. Some very strong, gusty wind, heavy rain, and look out for that dangerous cloud. Yeah, just lightning. caught a seven pounder, got off the water, and then somehow managed to drive straight into a hailstorm. Thank God I put the boat cover on. Jeez. We got chalks. 
Oh, did you pack them? Yeah, we're gonna put those pictures. Yep, we're doing good. Oh, hold on, take a break. This is. Hey, okay. there you go. Okay. All right, we've put the low safe and sound at a hotel parking lot. Today we're gonna sleep in the hotel because again we have to recharge batteries. But let me recap on today. Today started off on the all-time freaking low. Um, we were able to triumph at the very end with Peric's ginormous 24 and a half inch seven pounder. Absolute behemoth fish. Anyway, today was a bang up day. This is probably gonna be one of my favorite days of this entire tour. I know it's only day three. There's a lot more days to go, but I just something about this day. It was just super intense. Mainly because we started off down here and then we ended all the way up here. Um, but we're winding down now. We're gonna charge the boat overnight. We're gonna charge a bunch of camera gear and get ready for day number Four? Is it day four on the NS2? So that should be really cool. I think tomorrow we're gonna actually officially make it to New Mexico, where we uh, we'll get one step closer to meeting some of you guys and gonna, and hanging out with all of you all. But um, that's it. We're gonna peace out, sign out. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, keep fishing.